Welcome back to the Tool World Podcast. I'm your host, David Jew, and I'm here with Master Jew. How's it going, Mr. Jew? It's going pretty good. Welcome, we're not at the San Ramon location. They installed the mirrors. That's true, but it's a good thing we didn't go. <laughs> Forgot some stuff it's today. It's closer, it's <laughs> yeah. closer here. Okay, that's mm-hmm. fine. We yeah. will someday. We will. Get back out there. Right. So I was recently browsing through a Taekwondo page. It has both ITF and WT, but obviously WT is a little bit more prevalent. Would you say that's true? Hmm. Well, I, would, I, I don't know if I could say that around the world. Mm-hmm. But I think in the United States, yes. maybe that's true. I'm not 100% sure either. Or maybe just for <clears throat> this group, I'm not sure. That, that, that may be true. Right. So, but here in Pleasanton, California, I would probably say even California, <laughs> the majority of the, of the schools are WT and not ITF. Right, right. And uh, so on this group, they were asking about, well, do you guys teach Pumse, Palgui, hmm. Taeguk, or uh, ITF forms, Chunghan? And, you know, to my surprise, a lot of people actually said ITF. Right. Like Chunghan. That's right. Do you think that's true, valid, or why is that? I think that's true. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's valid because Taekwondo, if you look at really the history of Taekwondo, and we all, all you guys that are on this podcast probably follow ITF uh, Taekwondo. And mm-hmm. General Che is the founder of Taekwondo. And so you, we could argue all of that stuff and lay it all out, but you guys have all heard it. <clears throat> so if you think of it as Taekwondo coming into the world, that is a pattern, right? I mean, mm-hmm. look at America, who's the, considered to be the father of um, Taekwondo in America. Ricky Ha? Huh? No, Master. That, was, that would be in Europe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <clears throat> I probably know. I just, I can't think of the name. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is a long time ago. <laughs> His name was Jun Ri. Oh, that's right, yeah. 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 And so when you think about General Che's work and how... Can one man teach everyone around the world? You you can't. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's not really possible. What you need is ambassadors, right? Right. You need to get people that are doing it, teaching it, blah, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. And I believe in America, June Reed was the person that he had contacted. And maybe maybe my history is not correct. Mm-hmm. Maybe someone's going to correct right. me. Gave him a phone call or gave him a text or something. Yeah, or something. <laughs> anyway, um, but that, I think that's why he's considered uh, the father of American Taekwondo. Right. Right. I don't know if it's 100% true, but mm-hmm. that's, I think that's why. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you again, teaching people, teaching instructors, teaching. And so when you're, you're representing um, Taekwondo, ITF, Chung Hung, this is the way it's done. That's how it gets taught. Now the problem is that, and I think this is quite valid, is the problem is that you can teach someone something as their, as their interpretation and then they'll teach it to their in- students, which they'll interpret it slightly different and they'll teach it to, and mm-hmm. so forth. And right. so when you look at world championships, probably in the 80s, and you look at it and go, wow, everyone is kind of not doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. It looks a little bit different, whatever, mm-hmm. right? And I think that was kind of the birth of General Che really wanted to teach what he thought Taekwondo should be, right? Yeah. And so he created an IIC so that everyone would be on the same page. And then I think that, you know, probably closer to the 90s or something, that when you looked at around the world, all the, at the world championship, everyone was doing something very similar. Similar, right? And so now you're now we're looking at something, you know, his work is to mm-hmm. making sure that it's taught the way he wanted to be taught, mm-hmm. and that's where you get those kind of things. And you have to have a standardization somewhere. Not everyone wants to do that for various reasons, but you learn them. Mm-hmm. If I teach, if I teach. Um, <laughs> Chung Hung, ITF, whatever, to, to the black belts, and they decide they don't want to be part of, with me, whatever, they open their own school, they're going to, what are they going to teach? Are they going to teach, you know, are they going to create a new form? I don't know, maybe. Mm-hmm. Are they going to teach something? Well, they're going to teach what they know. Right. 
and however that is going to be slightly different than what I might be teaching which might be slightly different than what President Che is teaching which might be slightly different than what General Che is teaching I don't know mm -hmm. right? right there is going to be some interpretations I think mm -hmm. it's also interesting because if you look at a lot of like WT masters or especially older masters a lot of their roots come from ITF yes that's true I remember visiting a, a WT school. Just out of respect, he was a high rank, very high rank. Right out here in, in California, and I bowed and said hello, introduced myself, and, and then we were talking. He says, I did ITF. I says, oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, do WT now. Oh, yes, sir. And ver for various reasons, and I remember talking to another instructor up in Washington, and he had a huge following, and they did, they still do the ITF, forms, mm -hmm. the Chang Hao forms. Different though, different the way, <laughs> than the way I was doing it. Right. But, and we were talking and he's actually in the encyclopedia. He signed my book and I said, oh, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, I was kind of, uh, had to make a choice because I was here in America and um, just some issues going on. Says, do you need to, you know, be independent? Mm -hmm. So he had to be independent. That brings up a couple of questions here. What is the allure of uh, Chung Han forms, and what is your opi personal opinion on why do people keep doing them? Or they because you didn't see too many Pum say actually, you see a lot of them doing like Paul Wei or Tae Guk, plus the Chung Han forms. Well, I, I think um, if you think about like um, there's a lot of documentation prior to some of these other forms, right? Mm -hmm. I mean. I mean, I don't know the exact histories of some of these forms because that's not what we do. Mm -hmm. And, um, but if you think about ITF form, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or I should say Taekwondo name, 1955. Mm -hmm. ITF form, 1966. WT formed, I think, 1977. And so when you think of it mm -hmm. during that time, yeah. Obviously, the uh, ITF Chen Hong forms are being taught from 19, at least 1955 through whatever, 1970 mm -hmm. something at least. There's a good por part of it. That's what it is. And then when the WT is formed, you, they change some things because, well, you can't teach ITF, can you? <laughs> <laughs> right. If you're going to be, because if you're, j you're just changing a name, but you're teaching WT, I mean, uh, you're changing a name and teaching ITF, it doesn't seem quite right, does it? Mm -hmm. And so you might start creating, and there's reasons why you do that. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. You just, there's just reasons why you do that. So, so you have a big base already that's ITF. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a big base of people that do the ITF Chang Hong patterns, mm -hmm. forms. And so I think that's the reason why you have that. Any other thoughts? What was the other question about that? Well, it's about, you know, why would someone, you see a lot of people switch from ITF to WT. But you, you do see a lot of people switch from ITF to WT. And, and I still get calls from people that uh, want to do ITF forms. Mm -hmm. They go, well, you know, I really like that ITF forms and we'd like to be, we'd like to learn more about that. I says, yeah, no, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because they are slightly different. <clears throat> the concepts might be a little bit different as well. I mean, hmm, from a theoretical point of view, right, the, when we're talking about patterns, there's different reasons why they do certain things. Like when I look at, then I've been to some seminars that taught the WT patterns and and you look at it and it's going, oh, that's, they have a shorter stance and there's reasons why that, that is the case because, you know, maybe they spar more like that way or maybe they feel like that that's the way things are done, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Um, and, uh, and so when you look at like ITF and even traditional karate, like a lot of the stance is really long and, and why would you do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you ever see that in in actual fights or stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Not too much, but from a theoretical point of view, it makes a lot of sense as well. Right. So, um, 
<clears throat> Why would you switch? Well, there's different reasons. Maybe you want to compete more at the Olympics. Maybe you want to do that. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're gonna have to. <laughs> You're going to have to like change a little bit, right, if you right. want to do that. So it kind of depends on the instructor, kind mm -hmm. of depends on where they want to go. Where do they want to take their students? Right, that's true. All right, well, let us know your thoughts on ITF forms and um, where else do you find them? Where else do you find them? I don't know. <laughs> like other schools, other places you've heard about, maybe they're not necessarily part of the ITF. Um, but they are still doing those type of forms, right? That's right. And as always, don't forget to be safe. Keep training. And we'll see you guys next time. Take one.